Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, as you can see I'm inside today. In fact, <laughs> I just got back from working in the yard so I was all sweaty and everything. Uh, and then I thought well that'd be a good time to make a video while I cool off in here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take this UFO LM LED light and we're going to install it on my Lee Loadmaster reloading press. I didn't get this for free. I bought it. It cost me uh, altogether $35 off of Amazon. And it wasn't a two day delivery because it was somebody else so I had to wait a week. Anyway, before I do that, I got to tell you a story naturally. I, uh, I was out at the range uh, with my 45 and you can see that it's empty no bullets in here no magazines you just empty and I want to close it like that because I like the looks of it that way anyway this is my favorite 45 it's a Springfield and uh, you got to cut away slide and all that stuff anyway I had loaded up a whole bunch of uh, ammo for for shooting bowling pins I used to do that and uh, they're 250 grain bullets, so they, you know, they, <laughs> they're they kind of finicky reloading, and I was out there to test them out, and I went over to the rifle range, and there's a, a gong out at 100 yards out there, in fact, there's two gongs out there, and good old Mr. Wilson, that's what we'll call him, we call him good old Mr. Wilson, rather than, you know, identifying anybody, but good old Mr. Wilson come along and says, uh, what are you doing with that pistol on the rifle range? And I said, well, I think I'm going to hit that 100-yard gong out there. And he says, oh, really? He says, well, give her a shot. So I raised up and bing, first shot you could hear that gong, ping. <laughs> it surprised me as much as it did him. You know, and that, that's where I should have stopped because I, I, I emptied the, the other 12 out of the magazine without hitting it again. But uh, that... It, it was kind of fun, you know, and he he, <laughs> he was definitely as impressed as I was at hitting that gong, raising it up. He said, well, he said, I guess you really meant it. You're going to shoot the gong. Uh, but anyway, so, like I say, I had these, those were 250 grain bullets, which is highly unusual for a 45. Usually 230 grains the heaviest you can get. But I had those for shooting bowling pins. And uh, when you shoot bowling pins, they got this steel table that's got three pins on the bottom and there's a shelf up on the top with two more bowling pins and you got all 15 seconds to shoot them off of there and if you're not careful you just knock it over and it's laying on the table and then it'll take a couple of rounds to get it knocked off the table and it don't count until it hits the ground you know they don't start to stop timing you and if you get 15 seconds you just don't get a score you know because you took too long and me <laughs> I could do it 15, 20 seconds any day. So I, I got these extra heavy 250 grain bullets and loaded up a bunch of them like that. And then shortly after I lost interest in shooting the bowling pins. But there was this retired little old lady school teacher out there. She could, she could clean the table off in about, I'd say, five to six seconds every time. And uh, she had a nice 45. I don't know what brand it was. But... Uh, that's you know ladies will always put you in your place if you let them and i had to let her because i couldn't shoot them no faster <laughs> all right so anyway uh let's get on over there look at my reloading press and see how we're going to light it up all right this is my lead load master press and it's set up right now for reloading 45s which is what it does very best not very good at nine millimeter but it's really great at 45s and 38 special and stuff like that for 357s. Let me move you around and get a better view of it. As you can see, there's a shell plate right down here. And as you, you get the first plate, you knock the, the uh, primer out, come around, put a primer in, come around to here, put a powder in, around here you put the bullet in. Well, I wanted to know every time of course whether that uh, whether that case had enough powder in it or too much so I drilled a hole up here in this uh, piece and 
put a bore light in it and mounted it on the one side and so I can turn it on maybe maybe it'll work I don't know if the batteries aren't dead and it's almost unscrewed yeah there we go it's it's kind of flaky right now but anyway I had the light shining down through there you can see it I'll get a, a case and we'll take a look okay so there's a case with gunpowder in it and that light I've tried to adjust it so it's doing the best I can with it it's still just sort of a little vague but you can see the powder down in there I think maybe let me zoom down a little and see if you can't pick it up and that's that's a little extra right there I just spooned that in I didn't weigh, weigh it but anyway I wanted to make sure that I didn't have a squib which will happen if you don't have any powder you can just squirt the bullet out into the barrel and it plugs it so that the next round you load in there will blow the thing up we don't want that so I always look in there to see if I, if, if I've got a double charge the powder level will be real high and if I don't have enough the powder level will be real low and that's why I wanted the light you can see without the light it's kind of miserable you can't see much in there it's hard to see so I drilled a hole in uh, and the plate here <clears throat> I did that on all the plates I've got several of them and put this bore light down in it and it does the job not perfect but it does the job well the other day I spotted on uh, this uh, UFO light and it looks like a, an excellent idea so what we're going to do we're going to take this plate off clean up in there and we're going to install that light and then I can do away with this bore light I can use it for looking down rifle barrels and stuff instead of reloading. Okay, so we'll take the tool head here and remove it. I've got several of these. I've got one that's set up to do 38 special and 357. I got one for 45s. I got one for 9mm. And I got one to grow on. So, you know, and they, and they cost you money. This is a, an extra special one here that's got. Uh, uh, Mr. Magic Lee or Mr. Magic Joe, something like that. He sells these little plates that go on there to enhance the thing and make it more stable. So that's where I got that plate, and I've got to, I got to get this guy out of there. Mm. So let me take a look at it, and I'll be right back. All right, now ordinarily the tool head doesn't have this little flange piece on it, and you just undo this little screw and turn it and lift it out of there okay but I, I bought this guy right here from magically or something I, I don't know the videos not about him anyway but it adds stability to the to the tool head here and keeps it from shifting around so when you do that you have to undo all these little allen wrenches let me get this out of the way now just in case you don't know and you're curious these little lugs here are what holds that tool head in and it's got lugs on it too as you can see around the edge there and ordinarily you set it in there and line it up with whatever you want to be lined up with and you turn it and put the pin in and that, and that holds it okay that's just in case you were wondering how it works all right, so now I've got to open up my kit, and they said to mark where the bullet feeder ramp, you know, the shell, I'm seeing the case feeder ramp comes up here. That it's very important to mark that spot because there's an this is sort of a C-shaped light, and there's got to be an opening right there. So let me turn off the camera, and I'll mark that. All right, let's see what's in the kit. We'll open it up and this back piece is of course an instruction manual which at risk of losing my man card I read that thing I know I should have just thrown it to one side like a real he-man but I didn't I read it and here's the light Let's see how much of it I can get out of here without breaking anything 
here's the little mites that I'm going to put in there. This is the spot that has to clear where the, the uh, shell ca the case loader slides across there. All right. They say it's important, very important that I clear that spot. They give me some supplies to use. Oh, it runs on uh, a wall wart so that you get uh, power without having to change batteries all the time. Here's your the switch to turn it on and off. All right, let's open this little bag and see what kind of goodies they gave me. Boy, that's some tough plastic. Hold on. Right. <clears throat> so here's what's in the accessories kit. There's three little adhesive-backed uh, wire clips, three uh, little tie wraps, and a very tiny little piece of uh, looks like scotch bright. They refer to it as abrasive. Anyway, I've got to clean up underneath the, the press there so that I can stick that light onto it. So let me move you around a little bit. Alright, my work area is going to be this surface up under here. And I'll have to clean all the dust and dirt off of it and scuff it up with that piece of scotch bright. And I marked it. You can see my markings over on this side so that I won't put the light where the, the shell feeder comes up. Alright, so it's uh, not, not easy to sand this thing and have you guys watch. So I'm going to just go ahead and rub down this surface with the abrasive and then uh, I'll turn the camera back on. All right, so they say I've, I've taken the this stuff and roughed it up under there to take some denatured alcohol and make sure you got all the grease off. Well, I don't have any denatured alcohol, but I've got some isopropyl here. So we'll use what we've got, which that's what rednecks do. And uh, I'm getting a little red off of there, so it's, it's removing the dust from from the cleaning, that's for sure. And dirt too. Or maybe that's my <laughs> felt tip marker that I used to mark the spot where I don't want the uh, don't want the stick on the light. Alright, that's one we'll do it all over again. And if if you know if that doesn't stick well I'll put some super glue on it and we won't blame these guys because after all I, I did it the redneck way so I got to take the responsibility for it don't I? All right that's coming off looking pretty clean so we'll dry it There. I think we're clean and we're dry. We'll take this little guy. What what is what they said to do was to stick one of the little tire uh, things up there, clips, to hold the wire. And I guess holding the wire on this side just as good a place as any. So I'll put one of these wire clips somewhere about there. And that should that should do the job. I'll let you take a nap while I pull peel the pad off and stick it on there. Okay, the instruction said to put one clip here to hold the pressure, the weight off of the little ring of LEDs while you're doing the installation, and that installing the other two wire holders was optional. Well, I optionally moved them around here to the back. They show putting them down this side here, but. I want my wire to go around the back there and run off the back side of my table. So I moved them. After all, it's optional, right? So we'll take the little ring of lights and shove it right through here, I hope. I hope I left enough opening in there to push this thing through. Oh boy. Ah, I didn't. 
So there's there's always a way. I'm going to come through like this. Shove him through there. And just keep right on coming until I've got everything through the hole. <laughs> Even a redneck gets lucky once in a while, huh? All right, let me move this back. So, I've got this guy ready to mount the, the lights. I'll have to roll it over like this. And they'll go up underneath there. I'll look down inside it here. Hang on. I'll go handheld and we'll look down inside. You can see the two ends of the uh, light there where they open. Get my fingers off the lens. And so I'll peel the, the backing off and I'll stick the little booger right inside there. I'm not, not in the hole, but you know under the hole up under there okay and I'm gonna let you guys rest while I do that because it's hard enough being coordinated to do that without people watching okay so looking at this guy from underneath you can see that I've got the, the lights the little ring stuck on there and I just barely just barely got it in the right spot to miss <laughs> the, the case feeder but I do miss it by probably a sixteenth of an inch, so, you know, a sixteenth is as good as a mile. Let's put it all together and plug it in and see what it looks like. Alright, I've replaced the tool head on here and all lined up right. And I've got the, the light wired up, so let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Look at that, huh? Is that a night and day difference or is that a night and day difference? And I over filled that case with powder by way of illustration so you can see what it would look like to a guy that's just discovered he's overloaded one of them Let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit see all that powder in there uh, you should be able to see all the way to the bottom of that sucker if I bet if I didn't have any powder it'd be just as obvious let me pull him off of there Pour the powder out, put him back up there empty, and we'll go handheld so you can see from my, my viewpoint if I was reloading the thing. Look at that. You can see the shiny bottom of that case. That is wonderful. I think that's 35 bucks well spent. Alright, so time for Bubba or somebody. Well, it seems like Bubba decided to take a trip up to Memphis, this little country in bluegrass and stuff like that. And so he went down to the bus station. He was walking around. He saw this scale over there. You're waiting for fortune one cent. So he went over and dropped a penny in it. A little ticket come out the side of it. And he picked it up and read it. He says, you're six foot two. You weigh 189 pounds. And you're going to Memphis. Bubba said, yeah, I've never seen anything like that in my life. He was really, you know, <laughs> kind of excited by it. So he walked around in the bus station a while, you know, killing time. After a while, he wandered back to that scale and put another penny in it. The ticket come out the side and it says, you still weigh 189 pounds, you're still six foot two, and you're still going to Memphis. So he thought, well, there's got to be some kind of trick to that. What he'd do is he'd try to fool the scale, and he'd look around there, and he saw this engine with a blanket. He decided he'd go over and just pour that blanket, but the engine wouldn't let him have the blanket. So he got in a fight with him, and they fought up and down that station there for about a half hour. Finally, he whipped that engine, got his blanket, wrapped it around him, walked over and got on that scale, put a penny in it, and it says, you still weigh 189 pounds, you're still six foot two, but you done fooled around that engine and missed your bus to Memphis. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.